made a makeup artist school about four and a half years ago and started teaching makeup, doing uh, makeup workshops, coaching individual women about makeup and how they can feel better from the inside and the outside. So I quickly realized that um, women have a lot more challenges than just knowing how to apply makeup. So it turns out that people um, have very low confidence. They say things like, oh, I don't know how to do this eyeliner. I can never do it. Like telling themselves they're not able to do certain things. So this translates to their life. And a lot of people also have problems with their skin. So the question is, where does that come from? Does it come from the food? Does it come from the lack of self-care or lack of skin care, maybe? So I found that very interesting to experiment a little bit more and learn more about where does that come from and how can we overcome those challenges. I'm also currently in the process of becoming a health coach. So I discovered that few food has a lot to do with how we feel and how we look on the outside as well. So that's what I'm working on as well. And that's why the title of today's workshop is Skin Care and Skin Food. So skincare is more the outside um, part and skin food is something that we nourish our skin from the inside. Um, first, I want to explain a little technically how um, the skin works. So this is our skin and it has three main layers. We have the epidermis, which is the outer layer of the skin, which is what we feel. And the task of this skin is to separate our inner organs, our inner parts of the body from the outside. <clears throat> it is very, very thin. It's like 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 millimeters. So we, can, we cannot imagine how small that is and how sensitive it is as well. What it, what it does, it um, protects our skin from the outside. That means from pollution, from heat. So we, thre we sweat through our skin so that we don't burn on the inside. And um, it's very important as an organ. And if you imagine how big the skin is over our body, it's about two square meters of skin. That's why it's also the biggest organ. We have to think that we cover our whole body with clothes all the time. In summer, a bit less than in winter. But uh, our face is normally not covered. Our face is always exposed to sun, to pollution, to stress, to bacteria, when we touch our face all the time. So the skin in the face has, needs some special attention. Then we have the dermis, which is where all the nerves are, and um, some muscles as well. And we have the hypodermis, which is more like the fat cells. Um, now, if you imagine you put something on your skin, the skin is an organ, so it works all the time. It goes through the skin in your body, right? And the same happens with the food that you eat. What you eat becomes your body. So we eat something and then it becomes, it goes into the cells, into the blood. So that's why it matters what we eat. And it goes from the inside to the outside, right? Then there is something called free radicals. Anyone heard of that? Yeah? Okay, I see some heads. Um, so free radicals are molecules or atoms that come from the outside into our body. They are also produced by our body, which is not so important in this um, right now. But uh, so the radicals are like these kind of things and they destroy the parts of the cells. So they go and damage our cells. And that's why you have to imagine you have a cell and it breaks down, so the, br the cell cannot renew. That's why free radicals are always um, a reason for aging. And free radicals come from pollution, from stress, from bad food, from fat food, from fast food, all these kind of things from sugar, and it has an impact on aging. And there is certain foods that are called antioxidant. I don't know if you've heard of that, maybe. And those foods fight those um, free radical damages. So they help that this doesn't happen. So we're going to look a little bit in those foods as well, especially vitamin C, vitamin E are very antioxidant. So um, the topic of my workshops is the seven secrets to healthy and beautiful skin. And we will also do some activities in little groups to discuss so you can 
discuss um, in your groups what you think about certain aspects of these seven secrets. One of the secrets is skin care and protection. So as I said before, what we put on our skin goes into our body, right? And also protection is important from the sun. The sun is very damaging for the skin and sunscreen is very important in that case. Now we don't have so much sun here, but still, you know, it's cloudy, the sun rays still come through. So that's one of the parts. Makeup quality. I will, I, will, I will tell more about these seven things. Oil pulling, maybe some of you have heard of that as well. Some might, some might have never heard the term, but it's a very interesting um, practice to help your skin. Cleansing. So I would consider these for skin care from the outside, what we do from the outside for our skin. We have water, to so drink enough water. Sleep, big topic and beauty foods. And I do include here cleansing as well in the skin foods because food can be something that we eat, but it can also be nourishing in a, in a more, how do you say? Nourishing not meaning food in a different way, nourishing. And I want you to break up in seven groups now. There is um, four, the, the taller tables, and there is a table at the back. There's a, one of the workstations is at the window, and one at the last, second to last row over there. Um, you can, do you think we can find, build groups of the same size? Yeah? Okay. So grab a table. There is a piece of paper that says which of these secrets it is. Um, and I want you to discuss. You can, you have some pens there. You can write what you think, discuss, have ideas, maybe you have questions, and then write it down there. So now we're going to go through these seven secrets, and I would be very happy if some of you shared what you discussed in the group, or maybe also a personal experience. I will come to you with this microphone, and please hold it close to your mouth so we can hear the sound really well. So, skin care and protection. Who would like to share? Yeah, so the first thing that come up that we're, we were very confused. Closer. Sorry. Yeah. We were c very confused about the information about different cream and it's a lot about marketing. So at the end we don't really know what is good or not good. Uh, the sun protection, so we discuss about the cream that most of us doesn't like. It smell, it's not good feeling on the on the skin, so we were also discussing about other way to protect ourselves, but balancing a little bit because we need the sun. Um, we have to complement with vitamin D from, from time to time, so to which extent shall we protect our skin or not? Okay, great. Anyone else from the skincare group? Come on. All right, so I'll add something to, the, to this. Um, I was recently in Bali hosting a skincare retreat for Cetaphil, which is a skincare brand. And we did um, an activity with a smaller group, so we had um, 27 bloggers from all over Southeast Asia get together and discuss and learn about skin. And um, one of the workshops was about skincare routine. So we had um, the girls from Singapore, Malaysia in the group, and they had to write down um, their skincare routine, morning and evening, on little um, sticky notes. And they put it like on a wall like this. And um, Malaysia is a bit more simple. So they had maybe three or four steps of cleansing, moisturizing, protecting. And then we had this girl from Singapore who had a 10 step evening routine. So I don't know, I don't remember all her steps, but it was like eye cream and serum and mask and lip, um, lip scrub or what, whatever. So it was so many steps and it's, it's so confusing because as you said, there is so much marketing out there and you have to be very careful when you choose and how you choose your product. And um, I just recently read in a book that it, you have to be careful as well with products saying organic. So apparently the, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in the US, has so much work to do with all the food products 
to label them and to approve them, that they don't really get to the point where they can um, certify or label all the skincare products. So the skincare products go on the market without even going through this FDA um, certification. And um, you can label your product organic and it can just be 70% organic. As, I, as it says in the book, which I believe because she has her own organic skincare brand. And um, I thought that was really shocking because I always buy everything organic, like food and products, everything. So um, I thought, okay, it says organic, so it's organic. But we really need to question that as well. So look, look good, um, at, check the labels well. And if you don't feel good, I often listen to my intuition if I feel like the product is good or not. So. Um, that helps a lot. Let's go on to makeup quality. Who was in the makeup group? Who would like to share something? Probably something similar going on there with a lot of products in the market. Carolina. Hi. Hi. Um, I believe we have a similar concern. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Um, additionally, we have how to not to overpay for quality um, because many cosmetics are really expensive and we don't know actually what for we are paying here. Uh, the same um, organic versus commercial makeup stuff. And um, we were um, discussing about expiration date on the box on the cosmetics. We had difficulties to find it. Um, and we are as, as well confused um, which chemical substance we can accept in the cosmetics, which not. A lot of confusion in the market. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so makeup is another big topic. And when you walk into Mono and Globus and there's tons of brands that sell their stuff and they have sometimes overdone makeup people who sell it and sometimes, um, yeah. So. Regarding makeup, I want to say I just yesterday I was watching a video, um, a YouTube video about a Swiss model who currently lives in the US. And so I checked out her YouTube channel and uh, found her video about vegan beauty products. So I was like, okay, cool, let me look at this um, video and see what brand she uses. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it was vegan and not tested. It was also not tested on animals, okay? So I checked her video and she was like unboxing all her products and she, she said, this is so cool, this, you know, this mascara is only three, three dollars and it's, it's vegan and it's um, not tested on animals, that's amazing. So for me, that was um, somehow an alarm signal. I was like, how can you produce a mascara for three dollars? And I started Googling around and I found a lot of discussion about, yes, their um, customer service is very bad, but also that they produce in China. So you can have a product that is not tested on animal, which is good, but then it's produced in China and you don't know under what circumstances those people were who actually produce you know, these products. So um, only that it's not tested on an animal doesn't mean that it's not, you know, it, that it's not a bad, a good product in that case. So um, it's really important to double check. And there's also big brands like, um, MAC, for example, I think they also say they don't test on animals, but then they don't have a seal. There are special seals from Penta, for example, that certifies that certain products are not tested on animals. So what I always do is I always check for labels. I check if they're on some list online that certifies that they're not tested on animals. Um, I always check where the product's produced. And for me, animal testing is a big topic because I believe when you have a product with harmful ingredients, then you have to test it. But if you have a product where you know there's nothing inside that can actually harm someone, you don't even need to test it on, on an animal. So I guess that maybe helps the confusion about chemicals. And yes, there are um, chemicals like paraben, for example, that is said to be very damaging, but also a certain amount, if it's only very, you know, very uh, small amount, it might just be okay and not damaging. So it's, it's really confusing. I think also, we should not overthink it, but trust your gut and do your research well with, with everything you buy. Next one was oil pooling. We actually had someone, where is she? Who explained it to the group. Yeah, would you like to share? 
I'll just bring the mic to you. You take the coconut oil or olive oil or sesame seed oil and you swish it around your mouth, and pull it through your teeth actually, for about five to 20 minutes and then you spit it out with all the toxins that are in your system. Exactly. So oil pulling is um, an ancient Ayurvedic uh, practice where you take one spoon of, of uh, oil, it can be olive oil, it can be coconut oil, coconut oil usually in summer because it has a cooling effect, um, olive oil rather in winter and sesame oil because it has a warming effect. You swish it around your mouth and what it does, the oil and the toxins and the bacteria, they connect and then you spit it out and all the bacteria and the toxins go out. So it's... Um, very helpful if you have problems with your skin, if you have a lot of acne or pimples. Um, it's also, it has huge benefits for, the, for your health. You can do your research at home um, regarding um, your own health about oil pulling. Very interesting. I discovered it about a few months ago. Yes, you have a question? Summer oil and what is the... Um, coconut oil rather in summer because it's cooling. And then sesame oil in the winter. Yes. Um, so it's, there's different theories. Some say five minutes is enough, others say you need 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I started with a few minutes and I'm now maybe at around 10 minutes. Um, I think if you do it every day, it's important, that it's, it's important that you do it regularly. If you can do it 20 minutes, great. If 15 or 10, I think that's fine too. Um, yeah, I have heard that also the longer period of time. Yes. Yeah, that's it's said to be. Yeah. And that, but after you after you spit it out, you should rinse your mouth out. I heard. Yes, usually after spitting the oil out, I brush my teeth, and then I have breakfast. Yeah. Or you can also, um, what is called in English, like a tongue scraper. Yeah, to take the bacteria out of your tongue, you can do that as well. So it's really like very hygienic and a great um, health and beauty remedy to do. So I hope you try it all tomorrow. <laughs> Hmm? Morning, morning. Once you get up, so overnight all the bacteria collect in your mouth and then in the morning when you get up you take them out and you start your day fresh. I read that someone, they take the, they take the tablespoon and then they, of, of the oil and then they do it while they're in the shower and their routine, so it's not adding time to your day, you just do it while you're doing it. Exactly, yeah. So it's not that you have to get up 20 minutes earlier to do that. What I usually do is I get up, I take the spoon of oil, um, I do my skincare, I do my makeup, put on my clothes, and then I spit it out. And you have to spit it out in the bin, not in the sink, because, you know, coconut oil, for example, it gets solid when it's cold, so it can um, actually clog your sink or your toilet. So make sure you put it in the bin. Right, next one was cleansing. Who would like to share from the cleansing group? I can't remember the faces who were there. <laughs> True, you, the declutter. So, if we think about cleansing, we normally think about the product, but we noticed actually the uh, cleansing from our inside to out, like uh, doing sports and sweating, is very important. And thinking about the product, uh, it is sometimes difficult because we tend to um, cleanse well so that it takes too much away. So how could we find the best product or this could be a question to you. So for cleansing, it's the same as for makeup and skincare in general. So make sure you choose a product that is not too um, harsh on your skin, that is not tested on animals, you know the chemicals are okay. Um, that's fine. You should never over cleanse. So I usually, in the morning, I just wash with water. And in the evening, I, I cleanse well with the soap, with the face soap. And um, it's really important to cleanse. I have a lot of clients that don't remove their makeup in the evening. I think maybe not your generation, but the younger girls. They're, they're just too lazy and they don't understand how damaging it is. So if you have your makeup on your skin overnight, even if you just go out for a walk in the city, you have the whole pollution that goes on your skin during the day and that has to get off. And um, 
I just forgot what I wanted to say. Yes? Question, Martina. And when you said you came into a phase in the morning with just water? Yes. And you don't use any, any soap or anything? No. Mm -mm. Okay, and in the evening, what type of soap do you use? It, the one I use is called hand and face soap. So it's just um, a, a mild soap for the face that removes the makeup. Um, and I do remove my eye makeup first. So eye makeup first and then face and, and soap. But I also have this soap in the shower, so I usually just remove the makeup on the eyes and then I go to the shower and cleanse my face there. Yes? Yeah, for those of us who don't wear makeup, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I moisturize every day in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, should I be removing that? My, I, in the morning I moisturize. No, 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 uh, that's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important. Uh, should I remove that at night? I mean, should I, should I cleanse? At you should cleanse because of the pollution. Okay. Unless you live in the countryside and you only have birds and trees. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the whole pollution is very, um, uh, how do you say, age promoting? Mm -hmm. It promotes aging? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So makeup overnight, dirt overnight, it goes into the skin and it destroys your cells. That's the free radicals that destroys your cells. And when your cells cannot recover overnight, because there's, it's still kind of working on getting that out, um, that means that you get wrinkles. Right. So the earlier you start, before you have wrinkles, the better. Yeah. Yes? Um, so the one I, I, I vary a little bit. I have a few products that I just, um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I use this one, sometimes I use that one. But the hand and face soap I only use for the, soap, for the face. I, for the face. Um, so it's not uh, recommended to just use a normal hand soap for your face. It might be too harsh. It should be something that is specifically for the face. Because the face is, as I said, exposed to a lot of um, outside uh, influences all the time, so it's a bit more sensitive than the rest of your body. Yeah, but you know, there, there's so much discussion around this, so I think you just have to find what is good for you, I think. Yeah, there's, there's so much uh, right and wrong, and everything is right and has, you know, pros and cons, so yeah, find what is good for you and what works for you when you feel good in your skin in the end. Good, let's move on to the water who was in the water group that would like to share some experiences or what you discussed in your group? Come on. Thank you, so we have two, great. <laughs> yeah, we discussed um, how much water you should drink for, I mean, for not drinking too much because of your kidneys or not drinking too few, too little, yes. And also with water, also tea and other liquids. And um, yeah, we also had discussions about minerals, high mineral water. Yeah, and the variety about it. Okay, great. Yeah, so water is another um, big topic. If you watch some documentaries about water and how pet bottles or plastic bottles are produced and all the minerals, it's a very... Um, Delicate topic, I would say. I think um, there as well, there's people who say three to four liters. Um, for me, it's somewhere between two and three liters. I don't get there every single day, but I know that my body works best here. And I think you also need to find what is right for you. And it depends, you know, if you do a lot of sports, you might need a bit more. If you just sit in your office all day, but if it's, uh, you might need less. But if it's um, air conditioned, then you might need more again. So it really depends on what lifestyle you're leading. But I, for example, I always have a bottle of water in my bag wherever I go. Even um, when I fly, when I go to the airport, I take an empty bottle through security control. I fill my bottle after because I drink so much. Uh, I know because of an astrologist that it depends on your size, your type of activity. Yes. Uh, so some people need more and some people need less if you are bigger. More yes, bigger of course, yeah. And so and that's why it's interesting for each person to find out uh, the right amount because we can all take two or three liters. It really depends on Yes, the exactly. I don't know if there's a formula to calculate how much you actually need. <laughs> there is? 
Okay, maybe you can share it with me after. <laughs> you wanted to share something as well? No, it's good? Okay. Um, let's move on to the sleep. That was a really interesting conversations going on there. You are in the sleep group, right? Yes. I think you look well rested. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you can share your secret with us. Um, we agreed, first of all, that quality sleep is also very important, not just the amount of sleep, yeah. but what kind of quality. And we also said sleep during the night is much more beneficial than if you try to cut up the sleep during the day. Um, I personally prefer uh, sleeping during the night, especially between 11 and 2 p.m. is what I read and also experience to be the best sleep because you are most rested after that. Yes. Okay, so sleep, there's a lot of studies about sleep. And as I said, um, before midnight, it's very important to get some sleep. Ayurveda recommends to sleep between 10 and 6. That's the best time. Um, me, for example, I know I need eight hours of sleep, and when I get six hours for a few days in a row, I get stressed out. So I know that for myself, so I need to get enough sleep in order to kind of be able to function and work well. Now, there might be people, also depending on what you eat and how you eat, that need less sleep. Um, there was a lady in the group, where is she? Yeah, she's there. <laughs> she said she doesn't have good quality sleep. So if you have problems sleeping, maybe you want to question or ask yourself, where might it come from? Is it because you, um, because you sit in your, on your desk the whole day and you don't move, and then you come home and you sleep, but you're kind of, your body wants to move, but you kind of want to sleep? So it's, you know, physical activity is very important as well. So your body gets tired, not only your brain. You know, our brain is tired all the time because it works 24-7, you know, basically. Yeah, so if you don't sleep well, maybe you want to find out why it is that you don't sleep and find some um, alternatives or solutions for that. No, just, just to share, for me, it's also very important to have a, like a, my power nap after lunch. It's like this 15 minute, it's like sometimes as I can even do it sitting, like in the train, I just close my eyes and I, now I manage my balance, I don't fall and I can. And that for me, it really makes Great. The, my afternoon. Right. Nice. Yeah. So also there's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's also a reason why we say it's um, beauty sleep, right? You've all heard of that term, beauty sleep, because when you sleep, your skin has time to recover all the cells to renew the cells. That also prevents um, aging. Okay. Last topic we have the beauty foods that were also some interesting conversations going on. Who would like to share? I actually started with an anecdote that I really feel is worth sharing. I hope it doesn't sound too vain. I haven't posted it on Facebook because I think it sounds too vain. But four months ago, I cut sugar, uh, fast metabolizing sugars out of my diet. So sh sugar, a lot of chocolate, not 100%. I still have those moments of, I want a piece of chocolate. Uh, and uh, similar things I cut out of my diet. I lost six kilos in four months with doing nothing else. Uh, so I thought that was really worth sharing. I mean, fast metabolizing sugar packs it on. Uh, we had a lot of good comments from the group, uh, different things that work for different people. We, and we had one question, and then I'm going to add another one. Why did you put the lemon there? Uh, and was it just symbolic? And you know, if you could talk to us a little bit about omega-3s and stuff like that. Okay. Or, or good. I'm a, running a little bit out of time, actually. Um, yeah, so sugar is a big topic. I could talk maybe two hours just about sugar, but you need to be aware of where sugar is in, like in what products sugar is in. You might um, agree with me. So wherever, whatever products you buy, there's always sugar. So I also started checking labels of all the products I buy. So the more plant-based you eat, the less processed products you eat, the more um, the, the healthier it is, and the more it will support your beauty. That's why I call certain foods um, beauty foods. And the question about the lemon is also interesting. So um, you might think lemon is acidic, right? Because it has this soury taste. But what it actually actually does, it's um, alkalizing. Um, let me explain that quickly. So uh, I'm using this microphone. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so um, stress and pollution and that um, junk food and the sugar, that all um, leads to an acidity in the body. So normally we have a pH um, level of in our body there's an average of 7.4. So the more um, sour and acidic and overly processed food we eat, the more acidic our body becomes. So what the lemon does is um, neutralizing that uh, pH level again. So it's alkalizing. It puts the, the pH level to the other side. So it's very um, common also in Ayurvedic, I think, in Ayurvedic um, food and uh, medicine to drink a warm uh, glass of water with lemon. Uh, I don't drink it warm currently, but I just squeeze one lemon in about a liter of water and I drink it throughout the day. Sometimes um, with lunch or with dinner. So it's very, very helpful to get that acidity out of your body. That's why um, we have that lemon there. Okay, I have, I don't know how much time do I still have? Astuti? 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 <laughs> how much time do I have? Four? Okay, four. Okay. <coughs> oh, there's so much I could talk about. I really get excited about these topics. Um, yeah, so just to summarize, you all might have seen this, which is smoothie bowls decorated so nicely. Um, this is what I would recommend for a daily, uh, for daily nourishment in terms of food. So carbs are important. Who has been on a low carb diet? Yeah, did it work? So, so, depends. Uh, so carbs is not in general bad. It depends on what carbs you eat. Um, carbs are also in fruit. Carbs are also in grains. So the more um, unprocessed you eat, the better it is for your health. The more pasta and wheat and white flour, everything like that is not so supportive. We have um, fats as well, who has been on a low fat diet. Yeah, did it, did it work? Yes, yes. So oils are very important. We talked about the coconut oil. I talked about uh, in this group as well that certain vitamins can only be absorbed by the body through oils. For example, vitamin A, D, E, and K. Your body cannot take those vitamins if you don't have oils. So that's why it's important to when you do a smoothie, put some oil in your smoothie, or when you eat the fruit, eat some nuts with it, because your body needs that oil for your, um, in order to be able to take the vitamins. We have proteins that is very important for the metabolism to work. Vitamins in all kinds of fruits, etc. So the, the more variety of fruit you can eat throughout the day, and vegetables as well. More vegetables and fruit would be better. Um, be better. Minerals that are also in in the carbs and the proteins, it's all very important. Um, there is no perfect diet for everyone. So I, I can have my perfect diet, I can write a book about it, everyone will buy it because it works for me. But it will not work for all of you. It really depends who you are, how you live, where you're from. All these, um, all these little things impact on how you can eat. So it's really important to find a diet that is good for you, right? And my, they all say, um, one person's food might be another person's poison, right? <coughs> um, the last thing I want to say, you see the face mask, so we talk more about beauty from the inside, like the food, everything, sleep, um, skin care as well, but there's also a lot of things you can do for your skin from the outside with food, and that is not damaging. If you're looking for a cleanser, just came to my mind, you can use um, coconut oil to remove your makeup, okay? So little things like that, if you start Googling a little bit, you find uh, how you can do your own um, face cream, how you can do your main face mask, everything was just fruit and vegetables. <laughs> so just some inspiration, lemons are very brightening for the skin, honey is very antibacterial, so great if you have um, problems with your skin, if you have pimples, impurities, avocado as well, you can do amazing face masks with avocado. Green tea, very um, antioxidant, so very good for uh, anti, very anti-aging, and olive oil as well. Maybe you've uh, made a, I sometimes do kind of a hair mask with olive oil, so I just put olive oil in my hair and I sleep with it, and the next day I wash my hair. Very, very, 
hydrating for hair and skin. Okay, I have two little gifts for you before we wrap this up. One is my glowing morning routine, which is um, eight steps. I have my eight steps that I do in the morning. It also includes oil cooling. I think some of my clients have tried it and they love it. So I hope you will try it as well. You can just go to my website, martinafinity.com, and on the very first page, you can just put your name and your email address, and you'll be sent this uh, free PDF. And the other one is a complimentary beauty call. Like, I don't have a special product that I sell today. Um, it really, it's important to me that everyone I work with, I work with them on their needs. So not everyone has the same needs. And um, I'm offering you a free call. We can talk about your personal beauty challenges and see in what way I can support you to feel better on the inside and the outside. It can be makeup, it can be skincare, it can be in general lifestyle, everything. So I have um, a list here of appointments. You can just come up to me after and put your name at the time that works for you and then we'll talk on the phone to see where we can go. Thank you very much.